Through this presentation, I wanted to take a little bit of time to give you some tips on how to feed your feedlot horses and do it in a very safe way so you do um, maintain their body condition so you are able to take them and work them uh, like you need to um, throughout your time in the feedlot. So if you look at this, our first um, bit of information is the very basic plan with feeding our, our working horses, um, be it in the feedlot, the cow-calf operation, or anywhere, is to kind of take a look at this feeding um, pyra pyramid for a horse. And basically what we're going to show you is that the most, the bulk of what they should be eating is going to contain forage. This would be our hays, um, our pasture, and those types of things. The smaller portion is going to be our grain, and then occasionally we're going to also go ahead and give them some supplements depending on what they need. Many times with what you're going to be using them in the feed yard, you'll probably have a grain ration that's formulated with everything they need, but we really need to pay attention to the forage as that's what's going to make up the bulk of what they're going to be eating. So again, the basic feeding plan is going to be based off the forages, um, the hay or the pasture that they're going to be consuming. Remember that our horses, we want them to, to eat approximately about 1.5% of their body weight. Um, the minimum that we say a horse needs to have is 1% of their body weight of forages of hay, um, but we really like to try to get them to eat about one and a half percent of their body weight. That means I always work off of a thousand pound horse because it's an easy way to estimate what they should be eating. And most of our stock horses are going to be kind of in that rough range. And so your thousand pound horse is going to need to be eating somewhere in the neighborhood of around 15 pounds of hay in a day. Um, what they're going to eat, that's going to depend a lot on your particular management situation, um, what's being purchased. Partially, um, if you want them to eat alfalfa or grass, is also going to depend on the, the availability and the price of those different forages, because really you can use either one for your horses. Alfalfa, we like it because it does have a higher energy content, so you're going to have to feed them a little bit less. It's on the average is about 1.2 megacals of energy per pound. It's higher in protein, as you can see, of about 15 to 20 percent um, crude protein, and then it tends to be higher in calcium than our grass haze. Now, if you look at our grass hay in here, um, it, we're looking a lot of either brome, um, prairie hay. You move into the southern regions, you'll see a lot of the Bermuda grass. Basically, they're all going to be formulated, they're all going to have a similar nutrient content of where they're going to have somewhere between about 0 0.9 to 1 um, megacals of digestible energy per pound. They tend to be lower in protein than our alfalfas of somewhere around 8 to 10 percent protein. They are also much lower in calcium than what your legume hays are. So if you kind of look and compare the two, if we're looking at a good quality grass hay, either brome or prairie hay, most of our horses are going to eat between one, be able to consume between 1.75 and 2 percent of their body weight in that hay, which if you look at say our 1,200 pound horse, that's going to be that they're going to be eating between 21 and 24 pounds of the grass hay in a day. In contrast, if we look at our alfalfa, our legume hays, they're going, they're going to need to eat or are going to be eating somewhere in the range of 1.5 to 1.6 percent of their body weight, which means they're going to be eating that 1,200 pound horse between 18 and 21 pounds of that hay in a day. Uh, some of your horses, depending on how much they're being worked, really can survive on just an all hay diet, either the alfalfa or the grass. Only if they're working at a certain, a certain degree, and we'll talk about that in a minute, do you really need to supplement them with some grain. We just need to kind of look and we'll talk about condition score in another presentation to make sure they're maintaining their weight. And if they are on an all hay diet, then we really need to go ahead and provide them a little bit of a trace mineralized salt. One thing that they do require in their diet is some of the salt. And if they're eating all forages, either all hay or all pasture, they're not going to be getting that from their diet. If you're feeding them some type of processed grain, um, a bag to formulate a ration, they're going to have the salt within it. But just remember, salt is the one limiting, um, self-limiting um, mineral, and so they're only going to be consuming as much salt as they need. So really, it pretty much is recommended that we keep some type of trace mineralized salt or the plain white salt out there for those horses so they can consume it at any time. Certain times of the year when they're sweating more, say in our summer, summer months, naturally they're going to need a little bit more salt, and so you might see them visit the salt block a little bit more often than what they might do in the wintertime. So there's nothing wrong with leaving that salt block out there because, again, they're only going to consume and use as, as much of it as they really need. So let's talk about a little bit of the grain. I mean, many of our horses like the grain. It's kind of like opening up the candy jar for them. And you'll know with your horses, um, depending on what their body condition is and if they're maintaining weight, if you really need to add a little bit of grain to their diet or not. 
So it's going to vary with how much work they're going to have, um, a little bit with their behavior. Some of those horses get, can get a little bit cranky, a little bit difficult to catch, and many places will catch them, give them a little bit of grain, and then that makes them a little bit happier, more encouraging to get cotton to come in. And so that's what some places will choose to do. So how much grain should you be feeding them? Um, it's going to vary a lot on how much they're working and again the individuals of those horses because just like us they're all going to vary and some are going to need a little bit more grain than others because they just can't maintain their weight. Some of them you need to pull it away from them because they're going to get a little bit too heavy and fatter than what we really want them to be. So really you're going to have a little bit of increases as you might change how much they work. Maybe um, if you bumping up how much they're working um, you might increase their hay a little bit and a slight increase in their grain. So if they're working at a moderate to intense level, um, naturally they're going to need more energy because they're working harder. And so um, we always want to make sure that they're going to be consuming at least one percent percentage of their body weight in, in hay. And then I'll show you here, we might need to bump up their grain a little bit, depending on how much they might be actually working. So if a horse is really working at light work, which really is not doing very much, maybe walking through those pens a little bit, maybe not even, to, even every day, um, you know, you might give him a small amount of grain, really on the average horse about one to two pounds. He probably really doesn't need it if he's staying in a good body condition, keeping his weight up. However, it just might make them a little bit easier to catch, might make them a little bit easier to handle um, because they do like that grain. If they're staying in good condition but they've bumped up um, their work level to, to a certain degree, then you might need to feed them somewhere between six, um, four to six pounds in a day. And when you're getting up to this level, then you might need to split it between one to two feedings. Um, we kind of use, use the level of um, half a percent of their body weight to decide if you need to split it into two feedings. So again, that thousand pound horse, once you're over five pounds, you probably need to split it into two feedings. If that horse is a little bit thin and you want him to gain some weight, working a little bit higher degree, then you might need to feed him somewhere between six and eight pounds of a grain, grain in a day. And then you, need, you are going to need to split that into two feedings. We have to be very careful how much grain we feed a horse at one time with the way they digest it. And so really, once you're getting over that five pounds of, of grain that you need to feed them a day, you're probably going to split that in half. Now many times um, what you're going to do is feed them by a scoop and it's really important that you might at least have an idea what that scoop weighs. Um, kind of an average scoop with the kind of a corn and oats mix is going to tend to weigh about four pounds. And so you can just kind of say if I need to feed him more than one scoop or you know um, then I probably need to go ahead and split that into two feedings um, to, to make sure that I'm not going to give him some digestive upset. Kind of an idea of a grain ration, it doesn't need to be anything fabulous, uh, kind of one that's about somewhere between a, tw a 10 and 12 percent protein mix is going to be just fine for these horses unless again they're thin and, and you need to bump up um, a little bit their energy level to a higher degree. Many of us in our area are going to use a basic of a corn and oats type mix as the base of what that is and um, somewhere again as I said in that area of somewhere between one to six pounds a day depending on the workload of the horse, depending on how they, they do go and maintain their, their weight. Some can get along just fine with one or two pounds, some are going to lead, need a little bit more. Okay, let's go back and visit the hay just a little bit and talk about different ways to feed our hay and different hay um, ways that it might be packaged and some things to think about there. You know, we've got everything from small square bales to large round bales, um, excuse me, to large square bales and to round bales. And the kind of hay you're going to feed is going to depend a lot on what's available to you, what's the most cost effective, what you can handle the best. And I'm not going to tell you which is the best because different operations are going to be able to use and maintain, maintain, hay, maintain hay the best. I will remind you though that the quality of your hay for your horses should be a little bit higher than what that is in cattle because they're not going to tolerate dust and they're not going to tolerate mold as in what some of your cattle hay might. So you need to be sure that the quality of that hay is very good, that it's nice and leafy, that it's clean of mold, that it's not been rained on and those types of things. Think about a little bit how you can maximize the usefulness of your hay um, where you can maybe store it or um, be kind of careful and limited the way you might be feeding it. For example, here's a large square bale that you can see here. Um, it's actually a large square, square bale of alfalfa. If we sat that out in a pen of horses, they're going to gorge themselves because they're going to like it. And so rather than um, sitting that out in a pen, the large squares are quite a bit more affordable um, than what your small squares are. So instead of setting that out in the pen, we've covered it with a tarp 
and this is a dry lot and it's sitting very close to there. So we're going to fork that over into the feeders in that dry lot to try to maximize the use of it and try to get more um, use out of that large square bale so we can kind of make it a little bit more economical. Um, here's some other things with just some, some uses of hay. We've got a set, set of round bales here and many of us have to store those outside because we don't have a big shed like this is to go ahead and put them inside. Um, these, you know, round bales are nice and stored inside, so even the outer layer is going to be very clean. Here's some of the small square bales. Really small squares are going to need to be stay stored to the best um, in some in inside area because they're going to be able to, the, the moisture and stuff's going to get into them quite a bit. These large round bales, they look kind of nasty on the, side, how, on the outside. However, if you stand them up and put them in a feeder or just gonna, going to fork off of them, once that outer layer comes off, the hay inside generally is very good and just fine to feed your horses. Um, this is a round bale that we've also set up and could fork off of it to a group of horses, again, so they don't overfeed on it. In times when hay is, is um, limited, when we've had some drought, when we've had some situations that we're trying to be very careful and use the hay, sometimes doing this situation, although it's more laborious, can help um, be a more feed efficient way of using it. Also, if we can put the hay in some kind of enclosure, this is a round bale feeder that you can set the round bale inside of it and then close it on, over it. Um, much of the research has shown and just practicality shows you that this is going to be more efficient use of those round bales than if you just set it out there for those horses to graze on. Um, when it's just set out, say if this was in a lot of horses, they're going to munch on it, they're also going to lay down and bed on it, and so you're going to have um, more wastage with hay that's this way. There are also a variety of different kinds of nets out there for large round bales, a variety of different kind of feeders. And so those are something that a person can certainly look into if um, that, that's an option and something that you want to see. So again, here's a couple more things about feeding round bales. Here's a group of horses that are around one um, that's in a different type of feeder. But you can say, see that there's not a lot of wastage on the ground and so um, many of them are feeding off of it. Here's one that we want to try to avoid because the efficiency um, of this is not going to be quite as good where it's just sitting in a pen and you can see that these horses are, are wasting quite a bit of it. This is probably not the best situation. It's kind of a funny slide that I found and I, or picture that I thought I'd see it in there because um, you know, horses will do funny things and so this is something that we would really like to avoid and some things that you do run into from time to time as horses go and get into places that you don't want them to be. Um, also, you might think and consider about how you're going to feed um, your grains and how you're going to get it um, uh, packaged. Uh, many, your, most of your grains will come in 50-pound bags. However, many of you guys know that if you can um, do it in a bulk bin such as this, then it's going to be much more um, cost-effective rather than buying the different bags of feed. So being able to have it in a gravity bin like this and some type of wagon to take around and feed um, your horses is going to be probably a bit more cost effective over time than having a bunch of 50 pound bags sitting over there. Also many times as we get into winter months where we've run into rodents and things, this is going to be um, a little bit nice, better way to feed because you don't have the issue of um, mice and rats and things getting in, breaking into bag feed and things like that. So that's another option that a person might think about. A few other things that I'll just mention is, is we also have to remember that when we get into winter months, um, particularly here in Nebraska, that we do have to adjust how we're going to feed those horses to some degree. They're going to need more increased energy for body heat. And it's important to understand that they're going to generate more body heat from the digestion of the forages than the grain. So as it gets colder, we're going to increase the amount of hay that we're going to feed those horses first before we increase the grain. And certainly when it gets certain cold snaps that we might have to bump up the, the grain on them because they'll get to the point where they really can't eat any more hay because they're, the, it's, it's so bulky. But remember, as it gets colder, the first thing we're going to do is increase the amount of hay that we're going to feed them and then see how long that cold snap happens and see how those horses do and see if we can just maintain them on um, an, an additional hay before we bump up the grain. Now I'm going to talk really quick just a little bit of routine health types of things because these really do coincide along with your nutritional program, okay? If you've got horses that are not maintaining their weight, if they're losing weight on them, one of the, and you're, you're still feeding them quite well, one of the first things to do is watch them eat and you might have to have their teeth floated. You really should have this done on an annual basis of having the teeth checked on those horses at least once a year 
by your veterinarian and as they get older, if you know you have horses with some issues, then you might have to have, a, have, a, have some of those horses actually checked twice. Because what they will do is they will um, be, develop um, some hooks and some, some elevated areas either on the insides or the outsides and will go ahead and cut into their, their jaws or their cheeks, making it very difficult for them to chew. So if you notice that horse may be holding his head sideways, drops a lot of feed when he chews, um, you might notice that there's whole grains in his manure, then it might be an indicator that you might need to um, have his teeth checked because he's got something going on. They'll use regular floats, power floats, um, and it really can help with your feed efficiency quite a bit if you have that done. The other real important one is that you do have those horses on a regular deworming um, schedule. A lot of these horses are going to be dry lotted, um, maintained inside, where we know that there's going to be parasite issues. And so um, it's really important that we do keep these horses dewormed every 60, day, 60 days. It's best to really, if you work with your local veterinarian or whoever is working with you, to decide what the best um, parasite control program is. Some do a slow rotational program. Some are now doing fecal egg counts. And so you really need to work with whoever, you, whoever you're working with to decide what's going to be the best plan. But don't forget your routine health care. Don't forget your deworming. Because again, that's one of the best things you can do to help maintain weight on those horses and help your routine, um, your, your, um, your feed efficiency. One last thing about some routine health care is to make sure that we keep these horses vaccinated. Again, it's important to work with your local veterinarian as, as far as what you really need. These are what we call, look at mainly um, some of the main ones that we do need to have these vac horses vaccinated at least once a year for. Um, your tetanus, your sleeping sickness of the East and Western um, encephalitis, influ influenza rabies, and also West Nile. Many places, um, and I don't have VHV1, the rhino on here, and, and that's another one. Many places will also, as far as the influenza, um, vaccinate for that a little bit more often, particularly in the summer months if a lot of horses are coming and going. So those are just a variety of tips that I just wanted to throw out, um, some basic management kinds of things for feeding your feedlot horses, and hope that that kind of just gives you some ideas and things to how to do the best job to feed those horses and do things in the most economical way.